What's up guys? I'm filming this after today's video, but I wanted to put it in right now just to preface um, this video and the project I did in this video. Uh, first of all, what I did in this video I hadn't anticipated on doing right now. I was actually planning on doing a video today on building a very high quality air intake for a first gen for around $120. But the filter I ordered took forever to get in and it just got in, so I did this project instead. Moral of the story is don't get down if things don't happen according to plan. I was a little frustrated that I didn't get to keep on track of what my plan was for the videos, but in the end it was fine. I've got the stuff now. Next week we'll be building that air intake. Now from you guys, what I want you to do is comment below what projects are you guys working on? Let's get some motivation going in the comments. I want everyone to read everyone else's comments. If you have experience with what they're gonna work on, comment on it. Let them know how it went for you. Let them know anything different that you would do. Let's get some motivation going in the comments. Big or small projects, let's hear what you guys are working on. But let's get into today's video. On today's video, we're gonna be doing some miscellaneous stuff to both the crew cabs. So some of you guys who follow me on Instagram saw that I got different wheels on the OG crew cab. I got some black wheels. They look really nice. So got those. I had someone trade me straight across for them. Um, they fit right on. They didn't need any wheel spacers. Um, so I do plan on running, these are 265 tires, I plan on going up to 305s or 315s, but I need to level the front first. Um, so then it should look very similar tire size to this crew cab. So that's the plan with that, but in today's video, the guy who traded the wheels with me let me keep the little hub things that went around um this part of the wheel so we're going to be putting those on this truck um they're not amazing but i'll show you guys how to clean those up uh they're aluminum let me show you them so they're chrome and you can see a little bit of surface rust coming out on it so i'll show you guys a trick that works on stuff like this as well as like the chrome front bumper, this is a trick that I use to make that bumper look really nice. So I'll show you guys a trick to make chrome stuff look really nice. Um, very cheap and easy to do. And then also, uh, you guys saw I did the gauge cluster in the new crew cab, put new lights in it, painted the needles. I want to do that to this crew cab now. So we're going to be pulling this. Obviously I'm not going to make a tutorial out of doing this set. Um, I am going to show you one thing that someone asked about. This is an automatic. It's got the park reverse neutral drive uh, indicator there and there is a trick to getting the gauge cluster out with that. So I'm going to show you guys that in this video. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. Do those couple random things. Should be a fun video. And again, I hope this inspires you guys. These are small things that are easy to do. Um, if you're not feeling super motivated, just find a small little project on your vehicle to tackle and, and at least feel some sense of accomplishment. So that's what we're gonna do today and let's get to it. All right, so I've got these little wheel covers here. So let me show you the trick to getting some of this surface rust off of chrome. Get yourself a little Tupperware full of uh, warm water. Get a piece of aluminum foil. Crumple it up. Dip it in the water. And just gently scrub the piece.
and you can see the difference between the two. So I'm going to do that to all of these and then we're going to throw them on the crew cab. And there you go, it looks super nice now. Maybe not brand new, but for just trying to make them look nicer, it sure works well, so. There they are. All right, here they are. Looks much better. Still, like I said, I need to polish the wheels, but Here we go. So, that is the tightest lug nuts I've ever dealt with before. Uh, it was back breaking trying to get all those off. So, got it done though. Got them all put on there and it looks really good. Let's pull the gauge cluster out of the silver crew cab and I'll show you how to remove the reverse neutral drive um, indicator. Uh, so you guys can do that on your automatics as well. And I'll take that in and redo the gauge cluster like we did on this truck. I won't show you everything, but uh, uh, it should turn out nice. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is interesting, um, if you guys watched my other video on doing this, I said you don't have to lower the steering column, but for some reason on this one, and it might be the, the difference of having the automatic, I don't know, but um, it's not coming out. So I'm gonna have to lower the steering column, which is just a matter of taking off this panel right here that covers the fuse box, moving the fuse box, and then there's 10 nuts there that I believe are uh, 10 millimeter. I'll verify that. All right, so you can see right there and there on the other side. So it's a nut on a really long stud. So just don't take the nut all the way off. Just back it down quite a ways and then the steering column will drop. All right, so the column's lowered down now. So the shift indicator, so you can see it's actually showing that I'm in reverse, almost in neutral, and that's because I lowered the steering column down. And here's how it's attached. There you can see right there, there's a little bracket, and then there's just a little uh, piece on a string. So they tie that piece of string to the wire so that if it does come off, you don't have to pull the dash completely out. So it gives you something to grab onto to try and rehook it in there. But essentially, all you do is grab the little end of it right there and then let it go. And it's spring loaded, so notice it, it kind of went back up in there and that's where that string is nice. I can kind of fish around and find the string and then pull it down and hook it back up to it. So you'll notice the needle is all the way over to the left because it's spring loaded and it shot up there. 
Um, so that's all you have to do. But remember, you don't want to pull this gauge cluster out unless you pull that off of there because you'll end up breaking the needle or breaking part of that mechanism. So for those with automatics, that's a very important part to taking the cluster out. So anyways, there's that. So I'm going to pull the rest of the cluster out and then we're going to go change the lights out, paint the needles, put the reflective tape in there, do the whole works, and we'll come and put it back in. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you a before and after of this cluster as well. Um, so you can see that, so stay tuned for that. Another question people had was if these are dimmable or not. Let me show you. So the answer is yes, they are, and they're much more dimmable than what I had expected. So I actually like them about right there. And you can see that brightness. Right there. So I think I'm gonna actually order some more bulbs and put them in this so they all match. But the answer is yes, they are dimmable. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video today. Even though it wasn't what I had planned, it feels good to check something off the list and there's good results. That dash in the OG crew cab feels very nice now with the new lights in it. The wheels on the red crew cab look really nice, so very productive day. So before we end the video, quick sneak peek of the next couple videos. We've got the Jeep torn down even further, the whole dash is taken out. I've got to fix some parts of the wiring harness where some wires were melting. So we're gonna be addressing that. The one you're all waiting for is air intake for a Cummins 12 valve, $120 for everything with what I think is the best filter you can buy. And I have that backed up by a very good source that I'll tell you about. Also, I'm gonna be ordering the top end rebuild kit and new piston and rings for the XR400. So we're gonna be doing that. I'm also ordering the interior stuff for the Red Crew Cab. Uh, stock interiors is sold out of the color of carpet that I want for it, so I'm just waiting for them to get that back in stock. As soon as we get that, we'll be doing that. So we've got tons of stuff. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. If you haven't yet, like the video, and we will see you guys in the next video.